Hi everyone, Grant for the Flame Learning Channel. In this video, you'll learn a technique of inserting a 3D tracked object into an existing 3D composite. In other words, you've been working in a composite and you would like to add 3D tracking data to a particular object or objects without disturbing the work you've already done. So you'll cover how to set up the camera analysis for this kind of situation, perform the 3D track and assign the tracking data to an axis instead of a camera. You would then add scene trackers to compose the additional elements into the existing composite. So here is an action composite that has been created in a batch node flow graph. To set up the scenario, we've already performed the standard task of removing the wording of the shop's awnings. This was done with a combination of colour source, G masks, and planar tracking. If you look at the perspective view, you will note that the camera is static and the G masks are tracked to the shot. Now you would like to integrate another element into the scene and you've decided that 3D tracking is the best method of matching the rise and tilt motion of the original camera. The problem is that time has already been spent on masking and tracking other areas of the shot. Adding 3D tracking to the composite's 3D camera at this point will knock everything out of alignment and it's a pain to line up these elements again. So one option is to do separate action composites and combine them later in the batch node flow graph. Or you can use the following technique to add 3D tracking to an axis and not the camera in the same 3D composite. Let's take a look. As always, to start a 3D track, go to the media menu and select the background to 3D track. Now the next step is to ensure the camera is not selected and add a camera analysis into the action schematic. This is slightly different to earlier 3D tracking videos where you have always established a connection to the action 3D camera. This time you don't. Go into the camera analysis controls and switch to the camera analysis media view. Now go ahead and analyze the shot with the default settings. So scrubbing the shot shows all the 2D tracking points and if you switch to the camera analysis scene view, you can orbit around the 3D point cloud and confirm the success of the 3D track. Just line up the ground by selecting a few points on the floor and setting the ground plane in the refine menu. So this looks pretty good and you can switch to the camera analysis camera view and see how the point cloud matches the shot's movement. Now to apply the 3D tracking data to an axis instead of the camera, go to the analysis menu. Locate the column called camera motion and create an axis. Looking at the action schematic, you can see a new axis node called camera motion. This node is picking up all the 3D tracking data from camera analysis via the dotted mimic link. So this node is an alternative to using the 3D camera in the composite. But you'll still need scene tracker axis nodes to place objects correctly in the 3D composite. Looking back at the camera analysis camera view, select a few points on the ground where you want to place an element. Switch the scene tracker's orientation to XZ instead of XY, which will make the element stand up instead of lying on the ground. Now create the scene tracker axis. The last step in the workflow is to associate the scene tracker axis with the camera motion axis. This ensures that the scene tracker axis is at the correct depth in 3D space and uses the camera move from the camera motion axis node. If you look at the result view and scrub the time bar, you will note how your G masks are in place 
and the scene tracker axis with its grid is also moving in sync with the shot. It's also worth mentioning that you can have multiple scene tracker axis nodes and not just one like this example. So at this point you've performed a camera analysis on the shot but applied the 3D track to an axis which allows you to 3D track objects in the 3D composite without affecting any other elements that may already exist. Looking at the perspective view you will note that the grid is moving as part of the camera track. Yet the masks are tracking to the planar surface of the shop's awnings. The Action 3D camera is not moving in the scene at all. Now let's bring in a 3D object to complete the example. Call up the contextual menu and import a 3D object. For this example you have a 3D model of a post box. To make it look a little better go to the Action Node Preferences and enable Shading with Scene Ambience. Now to snap the post box to the scene tracker move the nodes closer to each other in the Action Schematic and parent the scene tracker axis to the post box's axis. Scrubbing the time bar you can see how the post box is mimicking the camera's move. Looking back at the result view, the post box is in position and matches the original camera move. All that's left to do is scale the post box to size and adjust the position and rotation to match. And at any time, you can select the tracker axis and disable its grid if it gets in the way. You can carry on integrating the post box properly into the scene in your own time. This concludes how you can apply 3D tracking to an axis to use 3D tracking data in an existing 3D composite without affecting other elements or the 3D camera. Please subscribe to the Flame Learning Channel and click the bell to be notified for future videos. Comments, feedback and suggestions are always welcome and appreciated. And thanks for watching.